So when evaluating the individual patient that comes in to see us with uh, autoimmune disease, it's important to not just focus on the disease, but also to focus on the entire person. In other words, it's important to take that disease uh, and place it as part of their care plan, but also plan in how to minimize the impacts of that disease. There are two critical questions here. One is, does my disease state affect the development of my baby? And the second is, is does my being pregnant affect the course of my disease over the long term? And those are both interesting questions that are important to answer. And so when we look at, does my disease state affect my pregnancy? We evaluate things like, what is the renal function like of this patient? So usually we evaluate the kidney function. Usually this is a protein creatinine ratio or a 24 hour urine to evaluate pr total proteinuria. We know that women who have autoimmune disease do have increased risks for hypertensive disease in pregnancy, one specifically called preeclampsia. And so getting baseline information about some of these factors is very important in our helping manage that patient and understand what their pregnancy course looks like later in pregnancy. We also look at very early things like supplementation with folate. So folic acid is very important at, at preventing certain birth defects, for instance. Spine defects or spina bifida, which is a very disabling condition, can be prevented in up to 70% of cases with appropriate folate supplementation. Some women with autoimmune disease, especially those who have Crohn's or ulcerative colitis, may have impaired ability to absorb those agents. And so we actually double the amount of folate that's recommended from the one milligram to two milligrams in those pregnancies to help reduce that risk. We also look at things like, what's the baseline health state of this woman? For instance, is she iron deficient as a result of her disease where she's not absorbing iron normally? Inflammatory disease states, such as those found in autoimmune disease, often result in iron deficiency anemia above and beyond what we even see in the healthy population. More complicated to that is even with supplementation orally, they may not absorb it well. So we may even discuss things like roles of IV uh, iron supplementation to ensure that mother has adequate iron stores. A healthy pregnancy requires approximately 1.5 to 2 grams of iron. So if you think about that, that's, you know, if paper clips were made of iron, we're talking about three or four paper clips. And that, that's supporting not only the baby, but also the placenta and also the blood that the baby needs to develop over time. Fortunate thing is the baby will always generally receive that, but the mother will be deficient as a result of that. So we look at that. We also talk about nutrition. One of the key features in autoimmune disease is sometimes patients cannot gain weight like normal patients would in pregnancy, and there needs to be a focus not only on the amount, a lot of people focus on how much should I eat, but rather what is the quality of what I eat and looking at those quality choices and how to get to nutrition, how to get to the appropriate caloric increase across pregnancy can help reduce things like problems with growth of the baby later on in pregnancy and also reduce uh, the likelihood of need for early delivery as a result of those complications in some situations. So then we also turn ourselves to the disease state itself. So fortunately, autoimmune disease in many cases will improve in pregnancy, though it does not go away. And that is an important aspect. So up to half of women may still experience signs and symptoms of a degree of autoimmune disease activity in pregnancy. In pregnancy, it is one of the only times in your life that you are carrying an individual inside your body that is not directly of yourself. And so it's almost like a transplant. And many people have thought, well, why is it my baby would not be rejected by my immune system? If I received an artificial heart or a kidney transplant, they would put me on a lot of medications to prevent that from happening. And the baby, and specifically the placenta, have developed some very unique molecular mechanisms to hide from the immune system. And one of those um, aspects is really the turning down of the Th1 immunity, which is the immunity that's responsible for T cell uh, mediated immunity and reducing the ability for um, that type of immunity from reacting with the pregnancy itself. Now, of course, that has other um, concerns, which when we look at viruses, certain viruses in our, in our environment can cause problems with babies. 
but they never would have caused a problem if you weren't pregnant. And that's because that immune system is turned off. Because that is turned off, that also assists in the autoimmune disease activity state when you look at that across pregnancy. So that's important. But it's also important to have a plan for maintaining remission. In other words, we gained the, or our goal was to get a person into remission prior to coming into pregnancy. It may have required a change in medications, changing medications and then still having a period of remission. And we don't wanna turn everything off when pregnancy occurs. The key is we wanna maintain remission. And so really the purpose on the disease state is really to evaluate how do I maintain remission and then who are the different people that need to be at the table in making decisions. One thing patients like to have is a group of physicians who are talking to one another that have interactive discussion about how you're gonna take care of the patient. And so this can involve gastroenterologists, maternal fetal medicine specialists, their OBGYN, a nutritionist. It may also involve other individuals as need be, such as after delivery lactation support. It may involve a surgeon. If a person has had a complex surgical history where they may need assistance in timing of delivery and, and specifically with access to the baby at time of C-section, that may also be necessary. And then there needs to be follow-up throughout that pregnancy as pregnancy is moving along. So for instance, from the maternal fetal medicine specialist side, we're gonna evaluate certain parameters to tell us how is the pregnancy progressing from the fetal state. So one of those key features is how is the baby growing? We talked about inflammation and autoimmune disease. Inflammation can increase the risk of preterm birth. So as a result, we usually evaluate the cervix of the patient to look to see is there evidence of a short cervix, which can be a precursor to a preterm birth. And there are some things we can do about that if that were to exist in some, some of those cases. We also follow that baby month by month to look at growth, to see is the baby growing well. We monitor the mom's nutrition across that time, looking at weight gain, looking at her blood pressure, monitoring how she is doing, sometimes checking blood counts, also checking some of those micronutrient counts such as B12, iron levels, and then continuing that prenatal vitamin across pregnancy and folic acid supplementation. So we go through pregnancy, when we get close to term, we usually begin to monitor the baby on a weekly basis to ensure the baby is doing well in utero, receiving adequate oxygen, is active, those sorts of things. And then we move toward the decision of timing of delivery, where we then begin to think about how should I be delivered? So for instance, should I have a cesarean delivery or a vaginal delivery? In the majority of cases with autoimmune disease, a vaginal delivery should be planned. But if a person has a disease state in which the perineum is involved in active disease, those are women who should be considered for cesarean. And there may be some other patients who also have complex previous GI surgery where they have conduits that could be affected by having vaginal delivery. Those individuals may also plan to have cesarean delivery. And when that takes place, when we make those decisions, we then create timelines for that occurring. We try to get all of these women to term. The goal is certainly to get to 39 weeks, completed gestation, and then have a healthy baby as a result of that.